All right, well, good evening again. Welcome to the Monday Thursday service. Uh, it seems like seems like this Lenten season has gone very quickly this year. Uh, we are we are in the midst of Holy Week. Uh, today, just a couple of announcements here do we, before we do get started. Instead of the hymn number 127, we're going to be singing the hymn that I, I gave you as an insert. So uh, that will be nothing but the blood of Jesus. As well, <clears throat> at the end of the service... Tonight we, we have the traditional stripping of the altar as I read Psalm 22. It's a, it's a solemn end to the service as we head into uh, the last three days. And so I want you to just um, take the time you want if you want to just be silent here in the church um, afterwards. But nonetheless, when we do finish with the service after stripping the altar, I'll ask that you, um, if you choose to leave right away, just leave quietly. And, uh, and blessings. Go with you in this Holy Week as we await Resurrection Sunday. All right, if you would, please stand. Uh, we'll begin singing tonight uh, hymn number 109, 109 in the Green Hymnal.
At this uh, time, please, uh, you may remain seated for the prayer of the day. Please join me, though, in the prayer. Uh, that is also found here as we continue in the bulletin this evening. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave his disciples a new command, to love one another as he had loved them. By your Holy Spirit, write this commandment in our hearts. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> the readings tonight are the tradi their traditional Monday Thursday readings, and the first one comes from the book of Exodus. Chapter 12, verses 1 to 4 and 11 to 14. Now the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be the beginning of months for you. It is to be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, they are each one to take a lamb for themselves, according to their father's households, a lamb for each household. Now if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his neighbor nearest to his house are to take one according to the numbers of persons in them, according to what each man should eat. You are to divide the lamb. <clears throat> Four, now you shall eat it in this manner, with your loins girded and your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. You shall eat it in haste, for this is the Lord's Passover. For I will go through the land of Egypt on that night, and will strike down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Now this day will be a memorial to you, and you shall celebrate it as a feast to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you are to celebrate it as a permanent ordinance. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians, chapter 11. First Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup, also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you drink this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And lastly, the gospel reading tonight. Book of John, the gospel of John, chapter 13. <clears throat> Now before the feast of the Passover, the Passover, Jesus knowing, Jesus <clears throat> knowing that his hour had come, that he would depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, the devil, having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, to betray him, Jesus knowing that the Father had given him all things into his hands, and he had come forth from God and was going back to God, got up from supper and laid aside his garments, and taking a towel, he girded himself. Then he poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. So he came to Simon Peter, and he said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? And Jesus answered and said, What I do you do not realize now, but you will understand hereafter. 
Peter said to him, Never shall you wash my feet. And Jesus said, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, then wash not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He who has bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean, and you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew the one who was betraying him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and taken his garments and reclined at the table again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, the Lord and the teacher, washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I gave you an example that you also should do as I did to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a slave is not greater than his master, nor is the one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. I do not speak of all of you. I know the ones I have chosen, but it is that scripture may be fulfilled. He who eats my bread has lifted up his heel against me. From now on I am telling you before it comes to pass, so that when it does occur, you may believe that I am he. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who receives whomever I send receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. There, therefore, when once he had gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him immediately. Little children, I am with you a little while longer. You will seek me, and, I, and as I said to the Jews, now I also say to you, Where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have loved, if you have loved for one another. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to God. Right. Well, it is the season for long readings, right? I think the Easter reading on Sunday is a little bit, it's a little bit shorter, but <clears throat> my voice has held on so far. So, so far, so good, right? Well, I'm going to stand here since it's a smaller crowd, and uh, feel like I'm a little bit closer, and I hope that that's not too imposing. If you start moving back further, I'll just keep coming back further. So don't don't try it. No, I'm just joking. But, uh, let's see if I can find my sermon here. It's nice to have such a good mic. It just follows me everywhere I go, and it still be used. Well, tonight I want to talk just briefly for the message. This won't be a long message, I don't think. I want to talk about four words. In this long text that we looked at just now in John, I want to talk about simply four words. If you turn to verse 8, if you have a Bible, you might not have a Bible. I'll turn to verse 8. Uh, John, John chapter 13, verse 8. We have in this particular part of the story that we just heard, now part of the story is, is caught up with the story of Peter and Jesus, okay? These are, these are two old buddies now at this point. They've been walking along together quite a long, quite a long time. Uh, Peter as a disciple of Jesus. And they get to this point here at the end of the, the time. I mean, the time has come. Jesus has come to Jerusalem. We know what is about to happen. And he has what's known as the Last Supper. And around this particular time, we're also they're also celebrating at the same time the Passover, and that's why we read that story from Exodus. But the interesting thing, of course, is that in this whole Passover and now the Lord's Last Supper, Jesus enters into this different um, 
This different scenario, this different story starts to unfold. He takes a towel and he girds it around himself. And at this point, everybody's thinking, what's he going to do? Probably. And he proceeds to do what we what we saw here um, lay come forth in the story. He begins to wash the disciples' feet. Um, of course, a very shocking thing for Jesus to do. But the washing one's feet was common in the ancient world. Of course, they they would either be wearing sandals or not shoes at all, and so they'd come into a house. And a sign of hospitality would be that the servants of the house would wash the guests' feet. Of course, Jesus was not a servant. And he chose to take that role, uh, pointing to a lot of other things that were going to happen in the days to come. But he gets into this little conversation with Peter, and he says to Peter, um, I'm going to wash your feet. And Peter says, wait a minute, you're not going to wash my feet, are you? And then we look at verse 8, and again, and Peter says to him, never shall you wash my feet. And Jesus says, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. The four words I want to focus on tonight. Unless I wash you. First word, unless. Unless. It's a, it's a funny word to think about. It. Sometimes we don't think about words too long. Have you ever stared at a word for a while and you think, that looks a whole lot different than I ever thought it did? Well, let's think about the word unless for a moment. When you put un in front of a word, it means not that thing, right? So unless really should just mean more. Not less, more. Shouldn't it just mean more? Well, we know it doesn't, right? It means something else. What does it mean? Unless. What does it mean? Unless. Well, it's a conjunction. And what's a conjunction? A conjunction is a word like if. It's something that sort of carries with it the weight of an either or. Right? It is a powerful word in the English language. If you're learning English as a second language, or you're learning other languages as a second language, you have to learn the conjunctions pretty well. Because if you don't know the conjunctions, boy, you can be misled. You can think something's going in another direction entirely, and you just missed one little word that made it flip entirely the other direction. And that's what's going on here. Unless, it's the either or. It can be used in the front of a sentence like this, unless I wash you, or it can be used at the end of a sentence. Boy, things aren't going so good this year. It hasn't rained since June. And now it's the middle of July and it's 95 degrees and the farmer might be saying, the crop is likely lost. But maybe the optimistic farmer then adds the word, unless. Unless. And that little word changes the perspective. It changes everything. Unless it rains tonight and all of our worries and everything is Washed away in the rain. Unless. We say each and every Sunday morning, in our confession of time of confession and forgiveness, we say the words, ah, uh, just, it just entered my mind. Um, we have, we are in bondage to sin. And we cannot free ourselves. We are in bondage to sin and we cannot free ourselves. A drought has taken over our life. We're in bondage to something. We are a slave to sin and we cannot free ourselves. Unless. Unless. Unless what? Next word, I. <laughs> Jesus here again speaking to Peter has no qualms with claiming some sort of status here, some sort of ability, some sort of power that only he has. And he says, unless I wash you, unless I do something for you, you have no part with me. Just one chapter later, Jesus will say in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am 
the way. I'm the only way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. No one comes to the Father but by me. Two things we draw from this. Jesus here, of course, as he is talking about this thing with Peter, he even alludes right away the verse before. He says, what I'm doing to you, you don't realize now, but soon enough you'll know what's really going on. Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Well, what's really going on here? Well, Jesus is saying there's a whole lot more than just washing the feet. What's happening here, what's happening here, Peter, is nothing short of the work of salvation. And he says, I, I am the one who does it. It's the exclusiveness of Christ. It's the reality that no one, except through Christ, can be saved. No one can be washed clean. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. But it means another thing too. It means we can't do it ourselves. We can't wash ourselves. Our hands are dirty. And no matter how much we try and scrub, we're just scrubbing more dirt on. Jesus says, unless I, unless I do it, do what? I've already alluded to it. Unless I wash you. In Psalm 51 too, which that's uh, a verse we read at Ash Wednesday. It's the traditional Ash Wednesday um, reading. We have the story, a psalm written by David after his encounter with Bathsheba and other things that occurred. And he says there in Psalm 51 too, after he finally, um, he betrays uh, commits adultery and also senses, senses the adulteress's husband up to be murdered. And he's committed great crimes and he's committed great sin against God. And, 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 and David says, he says, Be gracious to me, O God, according to your loving kindness and according to the greatness of your compassion. Blot out my transgressions. And then he says in verse 2, Wash me thoroughly. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. 1 John 1, 7. Similarly, if we want to turn to the New Testament, keeps the idea of washing in place. 1 John 1, 7. Beloved. Oh my. Chose the wrong verse here. Maybe it's 2 7. Okay, no, here we go. 1 John 1 7, it says here, starting in verse 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Jesus says to Peter, when he's going to wash his feet, unless I wash, unless I, and I'm the only one who can do it, unless I wash you, unless I forgive your sins, you have no part with me. Unless I wash you. Final word, you. Of course, this is what makes it personal. This is Jesus talking to Peter and saying, not that in general there is this concept of of love and forgiveness and religion and things like that 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 we can all buy into and be part of and feel good about, but rather it's all very personal. That the unless, the problem with the unless, that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves is not just an idea that we can think about, but it's the truth of each of us, that we are each in bondage to sin. And that the Jesus that says, I, is speaking to us. And the washing he wants to do is the washing of each of our sin, our iniquity, the thing that 
makes, separates us from God, God, through Jesus, wants to wash that away. God created each of us uniquely. He is our creator, and because he creates us uniquely, he comes to each of us as individuals and asks you this question. Will you let me wash you? Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you today for uh, this message as the night or the day before you were betrayed or taken or persecuted and crucified. We think of the solemn time that this Monday Thursday is as it leads into Good Friday. And we pray that we, having seen the words that you spoke to Peter, would take those words to heart in our own lives today. That we would all know that unless you wash us, we've got nothing. Unless you wash us by your blood, we are helpless. But Lord, also help us to see the joy in knowing that your grace has come to each of us through the cross, through the washing of our sins by your blood. Lord, help this, allow this to comfort us this day, this night, as we prepare to celebrate the resurrection of your Son. Help us never to forget the cost, what he paid on the cross for each of us. Lord, we pray this in your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. looking for my uh, I'm looking for my insert I don't know what I did with it now but uh, you don't need it thank you alright so the uh, as you'll see if you read through the song already or if you haven't um You'll see why I picked the song. Maybe some of you heard it or you know it. It's a pretty, it's a pretty common song. I haven't ever, I don't know if you've ever sung it in this church here. Uh, but it was a classic Baptist song growing up. And so I know it quite well, but it's called Nothing But the Blood.
again after supper. He took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new, is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Um, I'd ask the server to come forward at this time, and we'll be doing communion by intinction. Uh, you can, after after dipping, the, I think everybody's here. Is, well, after da- taking the wafer, you can then dip it in the cup and then consume. Um, we can practice open communion, so anybody who considers Jesus Christ to be their Lord and Savior is welcome to come and take part in the meal tonight. And we'll begin here this morning, uh, this evening, on this north side of the church. and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, may it strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing at this time now for the reading of Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Far from my deliverance are the words of my groaning. O my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I have no rest. Yet you are holy. O you who are enthroned upon the praises of Israel. In you our fathers trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried out and were delivered. 
In you they trusted and were not disappointed. But I am a worm and not a man, a reproach of men and despised by the people. All who see me sneer at me. They separate with the lip. They wave the head, saying, Commit yourself to the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, because he delights in him. Yet you are he who brought me forth from the womb. You made me trust when upon my mother's breast. Upon you I was cast from birth. You have been my God from my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. For there is none to help. Many bulls have surrounded me. Strong bulls of Bashan have encircled me. They open wide their mouth at me as a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within me. My strength is dried up like a pot sword, and my tongue cleaves to my jaws. And you lay me in the dust of death. For dogs have surrounded me, a band of evildoers has encompassed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They look, they stare at me, they divide my garments among them. And for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far off. O you, my help, hasten to my assistance. Deliver my soul from the sword, my only life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth. From the horns of the wild oxen you answer me. I will tell of your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, glorify him, and stand in awe of him, all you descendants of Israel. For he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, nor has he hidden his face from him. But when he cried to him for help, he heard. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I shall pay my vows before those who fear him. The afflicted will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him will praise the Lord. Let your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations will worship before you. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth will eat and worship. All those who go down to the dust will bow before him. Even he who cannot keep his soul alive. Posterity will serve him. It will be told of the Lord to the, to the coming generation. They will come and will endure his righteousness to a people who will be born that he has performed it.